Sister Mariam Almeri, dear global leaders, dear representatives, I would like to start by thanking Her Excellency Minister Mariam Almeri for the kind invitation to participate in the Food for Future Summit Leaders Symposium today. While I cannot be with you in person, I am pleased to address you virtually today in my capacity as the co-chair of the Ban Ki-moon Center for Global Citizens in Vienna. I commend the UAE Ministry of Climate Change and Environment for their leadership in the current Expo 2020 Dubai and for bringing attention uh, to the future of food and food systems. This week's theme, food, agriculture, and livelihoods, underlies how central food production is in the nexus of hunger, poverty, biodiversity, and climate change. Dear participants, as you may know, I grew up during the Korean War. Often, we had just enough to eat, but rarely enough to fill our stomachs. I was always hungry, all the times everyone was. This experience, my past, has given me a deep appreciation of where food comes from. Global demand for food is predicted to increase by 50% until 2050, and if, if we do not take action in time, agricultural yields will likely decrease by 30%. It has never been more urgent than now to address climate action, agricultural adaptation, and sustainable livelihoods all together. Unless we change how we currently produce, process, transport, consume, and discard the food, we will not get far in our climate change mitigation and adaptation efforts. Climate change mitigation and adaptation are two very critical issues. Ones that I advocate for in my various leadership roles around the world. Mitigating climate change is essential and extremely urgent, but adapting to its ongoing effects is just as pressing. As the planet continues to experience intensified and sporadic climate disasters in magnitudes, world leaders must take bold and accelerated action on building climate resilience and agricultural adaptation. Agriculture plays a key role within the agenda of climate change adaptation. As it is extremely vulnerable to the irregular changes in temperatures and rain patterns, more and more farmers, particularly smallholders who produce about a third of the world's food, are struggling with lost harvest and livery stocks. Supporting smallholder farmers is needed more than ever to address the growing population, the increase in demand for food, and to make food systems sustainable and resilient. Currently, smallholders only receive 1.7% of total climate finance. The estimated financial need of smallholder farmers is estimated at 240 billion US dollars per year globally, but the existing climate finance for them only reached 10 billion US dollars in 2018. So there is a huge gap. Serious measures are required to combat the growing threats toward the food security on a global level. If we really want to tackle the climate crisis, we need to address the entire value chain of our food systems. This means going beyond trees, land use, 
and productivity. It means that we need to put, to put people in the center of all of our conversations and efforts. In this regard, it was very promising to see the official launch of the Agriculture Innovation Mission for Climate Aim Foreseeing initiative by the governments of the UAE and the USA at UNFCCC COP26 in November 2021. I wholeheartedly join the call for an increase in investment for climate smart agriculture and food systems innovation over the next five years, which will accelerate the research and development of technologies and crops that can be adopted by even the most disadvantaged farmers. We must not forget the promises we made in 2015 through the Paris Climate Change Agreement or the recommitments we made last year at Glasgow. We must translate them into action before it is too late. From now on, world leaders need to focus on adaptation as much as we have been focusing on mitigation. Increased financial and political investments to adapt to the future shocks of climate change wisely will prevent bigger environmental and humanitarian loss and damage in the future. Placing greener, fairer, and more sustainable agricultural practices at the center of our climate action would go a long way towards achieving climate resilient food systems that leave no one behind. Once again, I congratulate the strong and ambitious leadership of the UAE in accelerating climate adaptation in lower income countries and vulnerable communities. We must support those who have contributed least to climate change, but are bearing the brunt of it. I look forward to joining the Expo 2020 in the following weeks and witnessing UAE's leadership in the upcoming UNFCCC COP28 in 2023. I wish you all fruitful discussions. Thank you very much. Shukran Zajilla. Moving on, I would like to introduce another video message uh, from Mr. Kyu dong Ju, the Director General of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. 